How to reinvent your organization in the middle of a crisis. Everyone talks about the importance of recovering from a crisis, whether it's a war, pandemic or natural disaster. Part of that recovery is bringing back small businesses and non-profit organizations hardest hit by the disaster. While the crisis is ongoing, it's recommended that every organization start rebuilding and reinventing everything from its brand to their assets. A disaster occasionally comes to a clean conclusion. Rather, there is also typically a haggard ending. Hence, it's vital that you form an opinion on when to call duty or indicate the stop of the disaster for your company. It could be influenced by preceding signs that point to a return to sanity or by conventional wisdom. Aspects to be included in internal documents. Appreciation. Thank others for the efforts made, the hardship faced and the anguish and sadness gone through. Recognize the true heroes who stood up in a time of need and those who have aided co-workers in need. Fairness. Be open and honest about the institution's issues and uncertainty in terms of functionality, resiliency and aspirations, and also what has but hasn't performed throughout the crises. Motivate staff to explain what they want and need to execute their jobs properly and tell how they genuinely feel. Expectation. Speak about both the organization you want to build and how it will enhance the welfare of workers. Rewrite your personal story as well. Be cautious, balance your desire with a touch of realism and demonstrate empathy for others' feelings. Dedication. Commitment to implementing the lessons learned from the crash, building new standards and avoiding reintroducing unnecessary activities from the pre-crisis time, it contributes to increased trust in the institution's future path. Stand by your words and deeds that de-escalate the situation. For instance, you may restructure the management team to include more communication abilities or new viewpoints. Decrease the occurrence of sessions established at the start of the crisis and free up more time in the business calendar to investigate new revenue streams. Recharge yourself and those around you. Managers are frequently anticipated to remain functioning despite long periods of intense effort leading to poor judgment, lethargy and even suspicious activities. To avoid this and other unintended harm, you'll need to seek scenes of respite. This could be resuming an exercise program, freelance more or even being smart when it comes to taking on additional projects. In any case, it entails being smart about how you use your time and resources, concentrating on your most prominent, high-impact moments. You aren't the only one who merits such attention. Initiate a discussion among your leadership team on how they would recharge their batteries while still leading the business. It should answer the following questions. How are you doing today? What do you require to re-energize and operate at your greatest? What tools would you need from the group or somewhere else to accomplish this? That's not always a simple topic to have. Contribute by providing your responses and allowing others to completely address their concerns to establish a thought atmosphere. It entails paying whole focus to the responses and permitting no distractions. Pledge to watch out for one another's excellently, whether it's through providing assistance when needed or pointing out unusual behavioral changes. Distribute this template around the organization, enabling users to post more or as little information as they feel at ease with. This activity should be based on the notion that individuals may select how effectively to recuperate, with help as needed, while still attaining their organizational objectives. It should also not be viewed as a one-time activity. Functioning in a context of structural intricacy and continuous catastrophes necessitates day-to-day -day resource and resiliency maintenance. Take a fresh look at the scenery. While you are focusing on urgent operational and people concerns, it's possible that you didn't fully consider the ramifications of developments in your zone. You could feel more comfortable sticking to your current cost-cutting strategy. However, your rival's exit, difficulty or expansion may have given rise to new areas to investigate or places that are less appealing now. The same may be said for private entities, such as vendors or collaborators, who may have an impact on the price and safety of your supplies. Current or new clients may have altered their purchasing habits, especially online, attitudes or loyalty. Some authorities have undertaken steps to maintain system stability, protect innocent consumers and strengthen businesses' financial trends. Take an honest look at your situation and ask yourself these questions.
How can you best apply your skills and knowledge to meet consumer demands? Who would you need to think to do this? What did you have to do to make this happen, e.g. mergers and acquisitions, natural expenditures, partnering? How much more of a shift in your plan and capability structure would this necessitate achieving cohesion? What would you have to give up to raise the necessary funds? To what extent are you currently vulnerable and what social and business alternatives do you have to mitigate these risks? Take a look outside of your control of the management as well. In an age of an even more accountable economy, relying exclusively on profitability would not be enough or even appropriate. Rather than employing a planned future, evaluate the effects of structural difficulties and detect low frequencies of oncoming catastrophes. Pose the subsequent statements to yourself. What are the chances of a variety of structural problems? What part should we play in dealing with them? How will this role contribute to tackling the systemic problem? What adjustments will our company need to make regarding visibility, competencies and procedures to achieve this position? What are the no regrets acts we can perform right now? Act on what you've learned. Regardless of how tough the conditions are, a crisis provides unrivaled possibilities to learn about the company. Some modifications and fixes must be done immediately in a crisis. Still, significant changes such as reduction of the organizational processes are not feasible. They would be too distracting when the focus should be on surviving. It's critical to go through an activity to figure out what the catastrophe teaches you about your company and then react upon that. It allows the company to become stronger in the next disaster and function better in the interim. Make it easy for employees to share their perspectives. One corporation, for instance, used crowdsourced sites to gather input from employees while simultaneously forming a SWAT team, comprising people from different departments, to assist talks in focus group interviews and staff meetings. Promote a diverse range of viewpoints regarding experience, aptitude and job and be certain to also include service providers, who really should serve a critical role in the management. Pose the relevant questions to the audience. What would we do when we're at our greatest? What tasks were the most difficult for us to complete? What aspects of our organizational structure, particularly the administrative ones, got in the way? What skills did we lack? In terms of tactics, individuals, technology and procedures, where were we more susceptible right now? Which choices were taken in the heat of passion which should have been kept or redesigned? What did our rivals accomplish well and how can we use what we've learned? What do our clients locally and globally inform us? Which aspect of the trip shocked us most? The most difficult component of this activity is putting it into practice. Figure out just how many postponed efforts are worthwhile reviving and to what degree. In addition to the normal factors – results, expenses, timescales and risks – evaluate how resilient and eager the organization is to put this learning into practice. At least three changes are required to deliver on promises of a much more human institution. From projects to interventions, instead of beginning programs to draw attention to problems like a lack of variety, start with a predisposition to act, for example by altering how you hire, train or receive rewards. Through the depiction of the identification, too often executives encourage too much integration which negates much of the benefits of a varied company. Rather, they should push the people to be the better ones of themselves. From psychological help to prevention, many firms have launched mental health care programs, including counselling hotlines, applications and frameworks for team members. Concentrate now on the place of work fundamental issues like excessive workloads, micromanaging or harassment. It necessitates managers providing facts and positive comments to convey the advantages these channels require. It is logical that after a catastrophe, you'd want to concentrate on stabilizing your organization and completing the most pressing duties. However, now is an excellent time to look at the firm and see the terrain in which it operates, aided by the insights you've learned and the enthusiasm you've built during a catastrophe.